Kiertotuupin tapana ei ole ollut kertoa paljonkaan sotilasilmailusta, mutta tällä kertaa teemme poikkeuksen. Kyseessä on Suomen hävittäjähankinta ja olemme täällä Amerikassa katsomassa täkäläisiä tarjokkaita. Tässä takana on Hornet. So the Super Hornet kind of um, designed for slow speed capability, which is why you have these very large control surfaces. Um, actually a, a very large control surface given the size of the aircraft and that is so it can fly slow, optimized for slow speed flight, not necessarily high end uh, flight characteristics. Uh, the uh, characteristic V-tail, on top you'll see a series of uh, devices. Um, some of them are as simple as lights up on the right, uh, as well as the bottom of both sides, a rectangular opening, that's your fuel dump. And then you have some more advanced uh, antennas, both on the left and right. Those antennas, um, electronic countermeasures, receiving signals, uh, and triangulating information, those kinds of things, threat warnings. Two GE engines in the back, FADEC controlled. Um, roughly 17,000 pounds of thrust each, and that number goes up to about 21,000 pounds of thrust each once you go into afterburner. The uh, engines are very reliable, like I said, digitally controlled. So computer tells it when it needs an oil change, when it needs overhaul, if there was a temperature exceedance, uh, or, or that sort of thing. So you take a look at this wing right now, um, and you can see the leading edge flap is in the down position. The trailing edge flaps are all the way down. Our digital flight controls in flight have full control over both of these surfaces. So the wing throughout the flight will continue to change on its own, both for the landing configuration as well as the takeoff. So when you're flying the aircraft, let's say you're going fast, I don't know, pick a number 300, this surface is going to be completely straight. As you slow down, it will start to program in. And we can fly this aircraft all the way down to about 100, 100 knots. Um, and when you do that, this control surface will come down even further. You'll see right here, um, this is where our wings fold. So we'll save uh, roughly six feet on either side, so 12 feet total. That's important, obviously, when we put 40 or 50 of these on the flight deck to save 12 feet per aircraft. That's the only way we can get that many aircraft on our flight deck. Over the Legacy Hornet, you would have just two wing pylon stations. This aircraft has three wing pylon stations. So one would go here, one would go here, and then the third would go here. So you've added two additional weapon stations uh, with the Super Hornet. In addition to that, we can land at a heavier weight at the carrier. So if you do not use that ordnance, you can bring it back to the ship or to your uh, Just your missiles on your wingtips as well as above the wheels. See this cut out right here. Space right here, this is another hard point. So we can put a uh, air to air missile here. Uh, and that's really what you're going to want. Now, if you're going to go out as, on a strike mission, then you're going to want to load this up with, with bombs under the wings. Cool. Let's move around to the front. Your Hornets have APG 65 radars. Uh, and when the Super Hornet was designed, initially it's the APG-73 radar, which was a huge improvement. And now, the most latest production Super Hornets, if you guys choose to buy them, you'll get the APG-79 radar, which is a completely uh, digital phased array radar, meaning there's no moving parts in it. So this particular Hornet has a dish that moves around and shapes radar energy. Um, the APG-79, Again, no moving parts, so significant increase in power output, detection range, as well as radar cross-section reduction. So it's not a stealth aircraft, but with the APG-79, it is less detectable. Uh, and that's as general as I can be with it. So that is housed inside here, the ray dome. Above the ray dome, you'll see this silver plate, and that is the uh, 40 millimeter gun which is kind of all in this area of the aircraft right here. About 480 rounds. You can see an example of the 
color displays, which help. Data entry is through a, um, a, a keypad, much like a smartphone, yeah. uh, for data entry, which makes things a lot faster. So uh, that screen? Yeah, this is, yeah, a, yeah. This is a touch screen right there. Exactly. Yep. Um, but other than that, very similar mm -hmm. to the Charlie Hornet. The back seat can be um, optimized, or can be configured with a stick and a throttle, if, if so be. Uh, but generally speaking, it's it's a missionized cockpit. So right. full HOTAS in the back so they can work weapon systems, uh, programming ordnance, work in the radar, all that. It takes about two hours to turn it into a, a trainer with the stick and the throttle. Yeah. How many how many hours you need to transfer from from Charlie to Super Hornet? Ten. Ten. Just ten. Ten hours. That's what we do here at VFA One Hundred Six. Yeah, yeah. And you have a simulator. Yeah. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a full workup. It's uh, you know lectures, ground based training, uh, a few simulators, and then ten hours in the aircraft. The flying's the same. It flies right. the same way because it's actually the same software that runs the flight computers. Yeah. The differences are the limitations. You know. One aircraft likes to take off at 135, the other one exactly. takes off at 145. Yeah. Uh, the landing gear is slightly different. The emergency procedures are slightly different between the two aircraft. The electrical system is different between the two aircraft. Yeah. Those sorts of things. What are the main differences when you are actually flying, when not thinking about the systems, but you are just flying? Can you sense it that this is now Super Hornet? Uh, it's it's a smoother aircraft, right. but with smoothness comes a little bit less agility. Yeah. But it's a much it's a Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, that's the way. It's not a Ferrari. It's a Cadillac. Uh, yeah. But it's a nice Cadillac. It's faster. Yeah. Um, the other main difference is the information that the jet gives you. Um, pretty much, you know exactly what's going on with the aircraft all the time because the displays and the way it's presented to you is that much better. Yeah. So, so you know what's going on. For you. Suomeen on tarjolla Super Hornetin uusin versio, niin sanottu Advance Super Hornet, joka on noin 20 prosenttia kookkaampi kuin nykyiset käytössä olevat Hornetit. Konetta tekee Boeing-yhtiö, joka valmistaa niitä St. Louisissa, Missourissa. Koska uusikin Hornet on niin sanottu neljännen sukupolven hävittäjä, eikä sitä ole oikein optimoitu elektroniseen sodankäyntiin, on tätä varten tehty erikoisversio nimeltä Crawler. Jos Suomi päättää tilata Super Hornetteja, on tilauksessa varmastikin kymmenkunta tällaista elektronisen sodankäynnin erikoisversiota. Nämä crawlerit voivat toimia hävittäjinä muiden hävittäjien tapaan aika normaalisti, mutta niitä puolestaan ei ole optimoitu niin sanotusti tavalliseen toimintaan. Super Hornetin hyvä puoli on Hornettien seuraajana se, että se on edelleen Hornet. Sen vaatimat muutokset ilmavoimissa ovat hyvin pieniä. Huono puoli on kuitenkin se, että se on tarjolla olevista koneista kaikkein ikääntynein. Vaikka sitä onkin viritelty, on kone silti vanhanaikainen.